Paweł Chmielewski, PCH24 TV. Szczęść Boże. Witam szanowni Państwo w programie W imię zasad. Dzisiaj mamy wyjątkowego gościa w naszym studiu. Jest to profesor wizytujący Kolegium Intermarium, dr Dragan Dakić z Serbii. Jest to uczony, który wykłada na Uniwersytecie Kragujewa w Serbii. Wykłada prawo międzynarodowe i zajmuje się między innymi kwestią ochrony życia nienarodzonych. Dlatego właśnie dzisiaj o kwestii ochrony życia dzieci nienarodzonych zarówno w Bałkanach Zachodnich, w Serbii, jak i w innych krajach europejskich będziemy rozmawiać. Zanim przejdziemy do naszej rozmowy, zachęcam Państwa do tego, żeby wspierać kanał PCH24. Bez tego wsparcia naturalnie nie będziemy mogli funkcjonować. Przygotowaliśmy dla Państwa serial Kto zabił Jezusa z udziałem księdza profesora Waldemara Chorostowskiego i redaktora Pawła Lisickiego. Mogą Państwo otrzymać wszystkie dostęp do wszystkich odcinków tego serialu od razu, bez czekania na kolejne emisje oraz dostęp do odcinka bonusowego, jeżeli zostaną Państwo naszymi darczyńcami. Wszystkie informacje na banerze na Państwa ekranach i pod tym nagraniem. Uh, hello, Dr. Dragan Dakic. It's very nice to have you in Warsaw in our studio. Thank you. It's my pleasure and uh, I feel so comfortable. Thank you for the invitation. You are an expert uh, in uh, cases of uh, abortion and uh, pro-life movement and international law. Uh, I'm very interested uh, how it's how is your opinion because in the uh, European Union, U Union many leftists say that uh, abortion is a human right. Uh, genderists say that it is a human right, uh, feminists say that uh, it is a, a woman's right, but it is really a human right codified in international international law. Uh, uh, first, uh, thank you for nice words, like noting me as an expert, yeah. The uh, issues of life protection were the topic of my uh, PhD thesis and uh, of uh, research in the uh, last decade, I would say. So I, I think I do have some information and knowledge uh, about the topic. And um, as to your question, uh, we don't have abortion as uh, right codified uh, anywhere in human rights instrument. So, uh, if you take a look through the case law of the European Court of Human Rights, it's also, uh, it is expressly noted that uh, abortion is not a human right according to the European Convention on Human Rights. Uh, what is being used or might be confusing uh, with uh, this regard is actually a sort of uh, perhaps manipulation. I don't know how to, to call it, but uh, interpretation given by the European Court of Human Rights where women were fined in valuation of their rights uh, if they were not permitted to access abortion is one thing and it should be separately um, observed uh, from uh, in, in respect to the question if abortion itself is a human right under the convention. So uh, what is the um, construction currently at the uh, European continent and human rights protection system is that if national state permits abortion it has to be accessible. So um, the highest reach of that concept is the uh, right to access abortion but only if abortion is recognized within national statutory not at international scale so uh, i would say that uh, a decade ago uh, barely anyone uh, was talking about uh, abortion as a human right even from the as you said feminist uh, circles so their authors belonging to this agenda were criticizing international law for omitting it from the scope of protection. So it is obviously not protected. But uh, we also should be aware of tendencies, uh, how international law, especially human rights law and its dynamics, uh, how they are evolving, how they are developing. So uh, there are different tactics how to uh, implant something into the scope of human rights, which is not originally defined as a human right and uh, some uh, trends are ongoing in this respect as to the issue of abortion. So um, uh, there are, as I said, different tactics of uh, recognizing uh, new rights or before that we had a tendency of uh, recognizing implied rights or derived rights. So uh, each of those uh, techniques are used uh, simultaneously or in, in some uh, cases uh, solely. Uh, to be um, used as an instrument for uh, recognition of abortion as a human right within the system of human rights. But uh, at this moment, I would say it was not successful uh, because still uh, it is the, within the margin of appreciation uh, given to the states to uh, arrange that issue as they prefer. I know that in Serbia abortion is legal, but I wonder how many children are every year killed uh, in abortions. 
So yes, uh, the situation. And what, uh, and what are conditions uh, that uh, are in, in that abortion is permitted? Yeah, uh, the situation in Western Balkans in general uh, should be considered from the legal heritage of the area. So uh, those were uh, communist countries uh, with the communist perspective uh, on that issue. And as we know, uh, communists were the first to introduce it in their legal system in, in Russia back in the 30s. So uh, generally, uh, we can say that uh, it's something like um, communist tradition to, to, to have it recognized. And uh, in this regard, uh, Western Balkans is, are still uh, in that uh, frame, those frameworks. And um, there are different uh, calculations about the number of uh, abortions performed in Serbia. But uh, I'm not sure about the numbers, if they're correct or not. But what we can reliably say that it, uh, Serbia, unfortunately, is among uh, the top European countries per caput when it comes to abortion. And uh, simultaneously, uh, it is also at uh, equal position in respect to some diseases uh, which are associated in the literature with, with that practice. So uh, it's a it's, uh, it's very uh, large number as compared even to Western countries, like uh, each in um, four or five women had it at least once. And uh, it is uh, calculated that uh, middle-sized city is swept out uh, through the abortion per year. So, but I, I'm not sure about the numbers because uh, I'm not sure if there are any reliable statistics uh, about it uh, because um, uh, each clinic performing abortion has obligation to register perform abortions, which is probably respected by public clinics, but I'm not sure if it is always uh, respected by the private clinics. So uh, we cannot uh, hold on, on um, official statistics, even if they exist. And the situation pretty much uh, is the same in, in different jurisdiction, uh, jurisdictions across, uh, across the Western Balkans. Such a high number of abortion must have a very destructive uh, impact on the demographics uh, of Serbia and other Western uh, Balkan countries. Yes, that's, that's uh, what was the, one of the main concerns of different movements and uh, agendas, NGO agendas uh, across the region, like uh, they were uh, investigating and providing numbers how abortion is uh, population destructive, but not only in the sense of the numbers of inhabitants, which we have, but also in the sense of um, um, destruction of, of the uh, cultural and uh, some sort of uh, ethical perspectives on, on life itself. So, uh, yes, uh, the, the, the cleaning uh, number of population is contributed almost uh, by default to, to the practice of abortion till the recent years when we have also a large tendency of uh, migrations. So, uh, these two factors are actually uh, cumulative and contributing to the um, not so great or disastrous, as some say, demographic uh, picture of, of the region. For years, there is a very big uh, debate about the joining uh, of Western Balkan countries to European Union. And in last year, Olaf Scholz from Germany started again this discussion, uh, saying that he is in favor of um, of getting uh, all the Balkan, the Western Balkan countries to the European Union. But I wonder if. Uh, if if that possibility uh, won't uh, be very disastrous uh, to pro-life movements uh, in your countries? Uh, uh, there is some um, process uh, or some progress made in the European way, as they say. Uh, it's a matter of uh, accessing to European Union is something uh, broadly discussed within the Western Balkan societies, which are currently out of the, of the EU. And uh, according to uh, national agendas and strategies, it is a noted as a strategic goal, for instance, of Serbia. So uh, as to the foreign policy of Serbia, European Union is a pr priority. Uh, but uh, at, uh, at, uh, within the societies, I, I would say that uh, enthusiasm is declining, decreasing. So not uh, all uh, parts of the societies are in favor of joining European Union. But maybe that was not really what you have asked me. Uh, if you uh, 
if your question was how would I estimate uh, accession, accession to the European Union of Serbia, for instance, and how would that impact um, pro-life movement, I'm not sure if, if it would be uh, that bad influence. Because uh, pro-life movement, I guess, would uh, have some possibilities to join European pro-life movements and uh, perhaps to impact uh, some uh, political processes in this regard, which is now uh, not able to do. And uh, as to the national standards of uh, relevant for pro-life movement like dignity protection, I think that the uh, European Union requires higher level of dignity protection than we currently have in Serbia. So in this regard, it would be actually scaling up the protection of the dignity if we would join to the European Union. For instance, there are famous uh, uh, verdicts of the European Court of Justice in respect to the dignity and how the uh, European Charter uh, defines dignity, what it is, when it starts, and um, how embryos are protected due to their dignity status. And uh, all those norms are not uh, applicable in Serbia currently. So uh, the level of protection which is recognized is uh, really lower than it is in the, in the European Union. In that sense, I would say that uh, it would be significant and uh, welcome uh, progress uh, of, of the national standards. Uh, is pro-life movement in Serbia a strong movement? And what is uh, its affiliation with uh, religions, with Orthodox Church? Yes, uh, uh, as I'm familiar, th there are some uh, movements in Serbia trying to make uh, assembly of it. And uh, some of them under the stronger impl impact of uh, Serbian Orthodox Church, actually relying on the doctrine of Orthodox Christianity in their work. Uh, and the others are perhaps uh, not that uh, religious, but still in the pro-life uh, side of society. Uh, I would say that they are pretty much marginalized, uh, not because of the, of the public politics or something like that, but because of the um, different aspects, like uh, possibility to act in an appropriate way uh, in the circumstances given uh, at, the, at the current moment of, of the Serbian society development. So uh, many of them are uh, not actually recognizing what would be right methods of, of uh, operation, if I may say so. And uh, we, if we compare uh, two movements, like uh, traditional or this pro-life movement uh, with um, pro-choice movement, uh, pro-choice movement is much better organized. And it's not just because of the fan uh, finances. It just uh, looks like they, they have more enthusiasm, they have more uh, creativity and innovations how to uh, impact to some uh, processes in society, like legislative processes, like uh, infiltration within the uh, different um, uh, spheres of, of uh, decision making, etc. etc. So, uh, yes, uh, uh, pro-life movement in Serbia does exist and uh, there are, I would say, at least two uh, sorts of uh, pro-life action. One is directly uh, uh, addressing the issue of abortion and associated questions. And the other group is uh, devoted to the development and support of uh, large families. And that might be a very specific and innovative way of uh, promoting pro-life ideas. So it is not a promoting of birth itself, of, co of course it's welcoming, but it's just one aspect of, of uh, pro-life picture. So if we are just uh, putting efforts in increasing birth rate, I would say it's not that efficient and it might be a question from the perspective of human rights as well. So it's not immune to the critic from this perspective according to the case law of the European Court, uh, which we already have developed. But the approach is to uh, support those who have already decided uh, to, to have large families, to, to have a child, to support them and that would actually have a stimulative impact on others which might have doubts, which might be afraid of uh, be left out of the support, etc. And um, I would say that uh, in this regard there are some uh, very, um, very ambitious measures uh, by the government, applied by the government in order to support uh, first, second child, uh, to support families with children, etc. So uh, in Serbia there is a, a, a I would say very good legal framework in 
toward, toward uh, action as I have described in supporting sense. So uh, I would say that uh, pro-life movement is not, uh, is not uh, out of the impact or influence in Serbia, but still it should be um, uh, made a distinction between two sorts of pro-life activities. Our governments in Serbia and in other uh, Western Balkan countries are in general, I say in general because one knows that governments are a very shaky uh, thing, mm, uh, are they in general from the Western European perspective rather conservative or rather liberal in uh, those uh, affairs of cultural conflict that we uh, observe? I think that uh, Westerns would be confused with it, uh, so as I am. Because if you take a look at uh, their statements and uh, what they are promoting at the election period, etc., you would say that they are very conservative, like for traditional values, etc. And uh, in, in the public dom domain or uh, public discourse, uh, those are, are like general features of uh, political discussion. Like uh, they are competing who is more uh, conservative, <laughs> if I may say so. But uh, if you take a look at the, the uh, strategies, policies and uh, laws which they introduce, uh, they look very leftist. So I think it's, uh, it might be confusing. For instance, um, in, uh, if we observe uh, waves of uh, changing abortion le uh, legislation across the world, uh, there is a decade uh, between uh, in 2000, actually, at the beginning of 2000. And uh, I have a book about uh, how laws across the Europe and the world were liberalized with respect to access abortion. And uh, one of the Serbian jurisdictions, uh, we call it Republic of Srpska, part of Bosnia and Herzegovina, actually introduced the world's most liberal abortion legislation in that period. So uh, it basically, in in Republic of Srpska, it is possible to uh, have abortion in ninth month of pregnancy, regardless of the of the reasons. What differs is procedure, how you get abortion uh, it, during the first four months of pregnancy, and how you get it in the ninth uh, month of pregnancy. So uh, the, the the procedure differs, but it's still recognized as a right, not just as a possibility, and it would be. Uh, as I'm aware, the most liberal European uh, approach to abortion. But the government probably would be qualified as a nationalistic or, or sort of conservativistic from the Western perspective. So I'm confused. I don't know <laughs> which, which cr criteria to apply. Uh, they uh, uh, like verbal or political discourse or uh, what they are introducing as laws, as a, a uh, reform agendas, etc. I suppose that this confusion may be affiliated with uh, this post-communist uh, heritage that you talked about. Uh, perhaps. Uh, uh, well, uh, during the communist era, uh, national issues were forbidden because of the multi-ethnic societies. So anyone who would uh, declare himself as belonging to Serbian nation, he would be uh, pronounced as uh, ultra-nationalistic and uh, marginalized in society, even facing jail, prison, uh, jail sentences, etc. So, uh, if someone is freely saying to those generation that he or she is uh, of Serbian belonging nationality, it, that person might look like a, a conservative or as a nationalist or something like that. But, uh, if we take a look at uh, acts, legal acts of, of those persons, it would be uh, hard to, to classify it as a conservative approach to the issue of abortion, to issue of education and, and different aspects which might be relevant for, for this uh, cultural conflict, as you said. Okay, and um, my last questions are about the possible impact on discussion in Serbia and in Western Balkan countries of decisions made in Poland and in the United States. In Poland in 2020, Tribunal Court decided that uh, almost all abortions are in our country illegal. In the United States in 2022, uh, Supreme Court decided that state can uh, ban abortion in their borders. Have these decisions made any impact on discussion on this topic in your country? 
Yes, uh, especially the last one, uh, which you mentioned from the United States of America, there were some public debates uh, how it would impact uh, our uh, legal system. But uh, the mainstream, um, mainstream concept was uh, uh, like we are frightened by that verdict and uh, women are going to have less rights than they used to have. And uh, uh, so the public discussion, discussion was framed like that. So are we going to have less rights? How our women are going to survive it, etc., etc. So uh, in the in the uh, academic circles, perhaps the perspectives were different because uh, it's not something to undermine how the uh, verdicts of the American uh, court can uh, affect the rest of the globe, uh, especially because we have seen how it uh, already was affected 50 years ago by the Roe and Wade uh, verdict. So that was an impulse for liberalizing, if I may say liberalizing, but that uh, pronounce might not be correct, uh, abortion uh, across the globe. And uh, it could be reasonably expected that uh, last verdict would, would also have some impacts on, on the approach to the issue of abortion. What, what is actually, uh, what is happening? It, it, I, I'm not surprised by the, the verdict itself. Not just because of the political construction of the court uh, and uh, who, who were the judges, but because of the scientific progress which happened uh, in the last uh, decades. Uh, back then, perhaps, we were confused in respect to the issue when, um, when life begins. That was one of the uh, problems facing a pro-life approach. When life begins, they say science, science does not offer the answer to that question. And the other um, legal issue associated to the first one, and it is really uh, a difficulty, like uh, how can we provide protection to something which we don't know if it emerged or not. But I would say that uh, at uh, nowadays uh, scientific development, we can answer those questions very easily. So relevant science called uh, embryology or developmental biology uh, clearly provided answers to, to the question when life begins. It, it's not doubtful anymore. And we are today able to provide some sort or some scope of protection to unborn life. Uh, what is uh, confusing and what, what actually confuses a broader audience in this regard is like an issue uh, of uh, right to life of unborn child. So what uh, implications of recognition would be. Uh, the confusion is in the fact that the general population uh, doesn't understand what is the structure of right to life itself. So it has at least three sorts of rights uh, covered through the right to, of life. And uh, one of them is right not to be killed. So if we confer that right to unborn, we don't have to recognize two other aspects of, of uh, right to life. It's enough to recognize that particular right. Uh, what implications would be actually are maybe not that negative to uh, abortion itself. Why I'm saying so? Because uh, met uh, medical methods actually uh, have a large... Uh, progress in the, in the last years. So it is possible to detach women from the developing unborn life and not kill that life. And uh, if we make it as a, star as a standard that uh, we are conferring a right to women not to proceed with the pregnancy, but there is no right to kill developing life if we are able to protect it. So at some jurisdiction, the abortion jurisdictions, uh, uh, um, the, this is the legal approach within the national statutory. There is an obligation to protect life which survived that uh, abortion. So what is the future to develop our debate on the topic? Perhaps is not if women can access the abortion, but what is the purpose of abortion? Is the purpose of abortion to kill unborn child or just I'm saying just, to detach women from the gestation. If we accept the other approach, it means that 
uh, we are free to recognize right not to be killed to unborn child and to provide it with uh, support in order to make it uh, uh, possible to develop independently from the gestating woman, from the mother. So uh, th that is something to be uh, settled yet, since I think it's important because uh, in the medical sense, in the sense of medical technology, we are uh, able to provide uh, life support uh, at the first few weeks of, of gestation. So uh, if we are going to understand abortion as a process of detachment and implanting uh, unborn to proceed with the development, independently from women, I see no reason to uh, be emotional about that uh, medical intervention. So if, if a woman does not want to proceed with gestation, but there, is a, there are medical, um, medical treatment uh, which can save the life of the child, I see no conflict in it. As long, as long, but this is one tendency, as long as a woman does not insist on that death of the child. So uh, some ultra-leftist uh, scholars are now saying <coughs> that a uh, woman has a right to death of unborn child due to the developmental process which happened in, in, the, in the development of medical uh, care and um, life support systems. Uh, so, it, it, they recognize that it's possible to have abortion in the sense of detachment and still have child survived. And uh, I'm saying some of them are advocating for the approach right to death, which is of course not <laughs> written anywhere in, in the human rights instrument. Uh, if you take a look at the main uh, feminist uh, scholars, they are not supporting that approach. They say one thing is to proceed with pregnancy or not to proceed. And it is quite another thing to insist on someone's death. So I think this is the um, topic of the future debate in the pro-life movement. That's very interesting, but this uh, detachment uh, of unborn child from the woman would mean that we are um, disconnecting pregnancy, uh, womanhood, uh, from, womanhood from pregnancy. It, it is quite liberal, I would say. Yes, uh, it's actually a process which is technically possible right now and it is happening. So uh, the question is, if she's not going to be a mother, do we have to kill a child because of it? That is the essence of dilemma. So we do, uh, we, we, this approach is actually is suggesting that uh, motherhood and uh, gestation are separated. But uh, there will be no motherhood in this event either way. So if the child is going to be aborted, she's not going to be a mother. But the question is, do we have to kill the child because she doesn't want to become a mother or to become mother again? So I think that that might be um, something which uh, pro-life movement also should pay attention to and develop its doctrine in this regard because we can see that uh, uh, feminist scholars are writing about the topic very much. There are also some institutes and, and centers uh, at different universities which are uh, contributing a lot of um, uh, publications and uh, scientific activities to the issue advocating for the approach which is according to feminist agenda, but not in the feminist, as I said, in general, but in this particular part of the feminist uh, thought, which is ultra, ultra feminist, or I, I don't know actually how to refer to it, but it mainly um, their approach to the, to the issue is not accepted by, for instance, Peter Singer doesn't, uh, uh, himself doesn't uh, accept that vision that, uh, which equalize detachment from gestation and the right to kill the child. So if, if, if we take him and other scholars, so we can see the division between the feminist movement itself. But uh, this part which is advocating for the right to kill the child is actually uh, very active uh, at the moment, while I see no pro-life activities in this regard, how to, what would be the pro-life approach to the, to the issue. So if someone asks pro-life activists, what would be your opinion about? So the process is called ectogenesis. 
So uh, it enables uh, this uh, gestation to go uh, in, in some sort of machine. So uh, the woman can be detached from the process. It could be arguable from different perspectives like motherhood, etc., etc. But if we are talking about the issue of abortion, where the mother, motherhood is not an option in either way, just we should ask ourselves, should we permit killing of the child because of, of the perceived motherhood and child relation that would certainly develop through the pregnancy? And in this way, it would be developed. But so at least the life would be saved. Saving life is always the better option, but uh, my yet uh, my uh, last and final question, it is not, uh, in your opinion, it is not better to do, as we have done in Poland, to ban all abortion. And there is uh, then no discussion uh, about this detachment, killing, uh, because abortion is banned, period. Yes, but uh, what is uh, reality uh, is that in, in Western Balkan countries, we cannot expect to have such a switch of legislation. Definitely, there is no uh, political or legal uh, force advocating for it, in at least not in an uh, efficient manner. So uh, this is not the, the realistic uh, occurrency in, in those uh, legislations. And uh, are, are we going to uh, have uh, abortion happening regardless to the laws which we are uh, introducing? Yes, we are. So especially in the European Union, due to the freedom of movement, so it's not impossible that some women will just uh, switch the jurisdiction and, and commit <coughs> abortion. Uh, even more in Western Balkans, because the freedom of movement also applies there, and the states are much uh, smaller, so it's easier to switch jurisdiction in, and, and to have it done. And uh, so um, what might be an uh, approach to it, which I heard, is that uh, abortion should be uh should uh we should make abortion unnecessary as women don't opt for it so uh, i uh, it was the idea which i paid attention to and i was investigating how it was in the roman age and i would say that they uh have actually developed uh through the uh, their age. Of course, we, we cannot claim that there is one legal standard referring to, to the issue because of the uh, long period of time, but we can uh, um, recognize some main features of Roman approach to the issue. And I think the essence is not in prohibition. It came later when they almost collapsed. It came at the later stages of their society. But uh, through the uh, majority of the other period, their approach was like making it uh, uh, unnecessary, undesirable, stimulating women, women, even in that age, they find a way how to stimulate women uh, to uh, giving a birth. So that was a very efficient approach because uh, as the historians of that time wrote, Roman, Rome itself from the small village transformed into the largest population of its time, not because of the prohibitions, I say, this is my words, not because of the prohibitions, they came earlier, but because of the stimulating approach to, to the women. So they even could get um, legal, uh, legal personality, or uh, uh, they could become eligible to engage into the business if they delivered uh, three or more times, I think. So it was uh, liberorum. Called, and it was uh, even something that they were uh, writing on their gravestones, like her, her name and she had Jus Liberorum. So they were so proud of it. And it was one way, appropriate to that time, how to stimulate women to opt for a birth and not for the abortion, which was very uh, dangerous in, in, in that time, uh, hazardous for their health, etc. This was just one of the approaches to it. And the other one, uh, of course, was a uh, role of pater familias in it. So he, who was the main decision maker, had no economical interest in abortion because he could uh, have uh, economic benefits of, of the child itself. I'm just saying those all were measures appropriate for that time, but still the concept is applicable today. So to find the way to stimulate women and not uh, to go in the direction of, of prohibitions. What is the, the, the role of, of prohibition, I would say? I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's uh, entirely useless, because it has a great impact on the awareness of people that something is wrong, which is actually. 
And if we prohibit something, in the majority of population is expected to um, abstain from, from that act. And that's the good uh, effect of prohibition. But again, we should ask ourselves, uh, is it efficient enough? Or maybe this other approach would provide better fruits. It was a very great and interesting discussion, I think. So thank you for the uh, interview. It was a great pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. Bardzo Państwu dziękuję za uwagę. Zachęcam do tego, żeby udostępniać to nagranie w mediach społecznościowych i żeby wspierać kanał PCH24, bo żeby takie rozmowy mogły powstawać, to wsparcie jest konieczne. Przypominam o możliwości zostania naszym darczyńcą i uzyskania w efekcie dostępu do wszystkich odcinków serialu Kto zabił Jezusa od razu, a także do odcinka bonusowego to w Wielkim Tygodniu. Wszystkie informacje na Państwa ekranach, na banerze i pod tym nagraniem. Kłaniam się i z Panem Bogiem.